music videos, the key to music videos, we write music video treatments. We don't write screenplays or scripts. The music video treatment is the outline of the entire video. And you have to really, it have to really be eye catching because most of the time when you write treatments, you know, in the record label world, there's a video commissioner. And the video commission is the person that's dedicated to selecting a director to shoot a video for your, some of your favorite artists. Like, you know, the Outkast video, that would have been a video commission would have find a director to pick it. And normally the video commissioner, you know, they look at the treatments, like you sort of bid, you pitch in the bid for the job. And then at the end of the day, you know, the artist or the video commissioner could kind of choose a job, but maybe sometimes it's only the artist's decision. But it all starts from a treatment. And everything starts from a treatment. Stage plays, I'm sure, treatments, um, screenplays, feature films. It's all, it starts with a treatment before you get into it. But with music videos, you stay out of the treatment, you know? And the only other element that you use for the music videos with the treatment is storyboards. Storyboards bring across your visuals as well. Because you have to keep in mind, you have to sell this, you know? Uh, um, even if it's, a, it's a, just an artist and they ain't signed to a record label, you gotta sell the job to them, you know? Because they're paying for this music video. And another thing that, that, um, that's a very important element of music video treatments is the budget, you know? Because if you have a million dollars, you could do whatever you want. You could write in a helicopter, you could write in a boat chase, you know? But if you have just, a thousand or five hundred dollars, you have to think smart and creative. That's one thing I love about music videos, you know? So the first professional music video I did was in Toronto, Canada for an artist called KJ. And um, basically he was a good friend of mine, you know, and this is a, during the times when I was still an intern, a production assistant, and I wanted to prove myself as a music video director. So KJ was making a buzz in Toronto and I was like, hey, I want to do a music video for you for free. It obviously wasn't free. I had to fund the video myself, but I wanted to prove that I was capable of doing music videos so I could get other work. Because for directors, our resume is our work. You know, like that reel I show you, that's my resume. That's how I get work, you know? Or the video you did before that is your work. So this was like still at the beginning stages of my career. I really didn't know much about treatments and how to write a treatment, you know? But I, by doing research, I went to workshops like this in Toronto, and that was really my school, you know, and getting advice from people like X and all these other people. All right, so the treatment almost always has, you have the artist's name, you put the song, and then the director's name is on the treatment. Like I said, this was really early on in my career, and um, when you see the progress in the way I did treatments, it changed a lot. Um, this is just a basic structure, one page, um, and because I was funding the video, I didn't really have to convince the artist, he just had to trust me, but I still had to bring across to the crew what I wanted to do with the video, you know? So, at the first line that I wrote, a continuous short, one take music video, no cuts. So we open up in a, gra in a, gra a graffiti, graffiti, graffiti alley as the camera slowly dolly forward from a distance to a close up shot of a girl playing a marching band, drum alone. The girl has puffy hair and is dressed in Madonna 80s inspired style clothing and also wearing shades. The marching drum is symbolic for the snare drum in the song's instrumental. So it's not narrative, you're right. He performs the entire time, it's a non-narrative music video. Um, and you wanna be as descriptive as you could within your treatment because keep in mind guys, you have to sell this to the artist or sell this to the record label, especially if you're bidding. Because for those bigger artists, like Beyonce, Jay-Z, and you know, those huge artists, you got a bit. Sometimes it's like 20 directors going for one job. And that video commissioner got to say, all right, let's narrow it down to two. This person treatment is better, and this other person treatment is better. And like I said, because this was early on, something that I did later on in my career, um, the way I write treatments is completely different. Like that treatment is a package to get it, you know? So from the treatment, I got a storyboard done. And this was the first time I ever did storyboards. I had a uh, storyboard artist, his name was Ian Mark in Toronto. And I sat with him, I gave him the treatment, and I sat with him and I explained him what I wanted. And this is what he came up with, right? So and you can see, like I said in the description of the treatment, the graffiti alley, you know? So it just helps bring the visuals even more from the treatment by seeing a visual, a sketch of what we're about to see. And the thing about music videos that are interesting is things change. I'm sure it's the same with stage plays, feature films, short films, documentaries. You plan one thing, but things change drastically. So that was one of my early times learning that to be a director, you have to know how to accept change and work fast on how to make it, you know, make it work, you know what I mean? So originally in this, I had three girls, three girls. 
two of the girls cancel on me an hour before the shoot, right? And I, I always like to say that. I say, you know, things happen for a reason. That's my philosophy, you know? Always happen for a reason. And one girl, to me, end up working more than the three girls, you know? The one take is something that I love. If anybody know my work, they know I love one takes. The reason why I love one takes is because, what's we'll say it again? A one take is a continuous shot with no edits. Basically, if I have a camera and the artist is performing, I don't cut at all. So the entire video is shot without any edits, you know? So if you make a mistake, you gotta go at the beginning. <laughs> you gotta go at the start. And um, this particular situation, it was very hard because, for example, the model, those, anybody ever hold a marching drum before? It's heavy. It's heavy. And this girl isn't big at all. As you can see, so when I showed the video, and um, it became very heavy after like about the fifth take, you know? But she was a trooper and she went on and on and on. Because the minute KJ, the artist, make a mistake, we gotta go at the beginning and go again. But what I love about them, when you achieve it, it's, it's a big goal, you know what I mean? Because it's like, wow. Because it looks so simple, but it's so difficult. But you, you, you capture the artist the entire time, and you really following them, and you really seeing what they're saying. Because sometimes when you cut, you lose that, you know? So that's what I love about One Takes. Some of my favorite music directors that inspired me is Michel Gondry. He's a French director. Um, and Spike Jones. Are you sure you guys ever heard of Spike Jones before? Where the Wild Things are, um, the movie Her, he did that. He inspired me. They did, they did one or two one takes. And I thought it was such a cool aspect to do one takes, you know, because it's all, it's really different. And one thing what I mentioned earlier was budget. Budget is key. One takes is actually a creative way of working with a budget. I had to fund this video myself, you know what I mean? So I figure if I do a one take, I don't need lights and the edit, there's no edit, <laughs> it's just a one take. So it's creative, it's a creative decision, but also a budget decision, what I love about it, you know? I remember you saying that you started work first and then you went to film school. Do you think film school had an impact on you or you think it... Right. That's, that's how I like to put it. Film school taught me the technical aspect, you know? Um, film school is just... That, that's the way... That's my philosophy with film school. I always tell young people when they're interested in going to film school, um, you won't really learn your stuff until you go on set. That was really just... I knew, I knew, I knew my creative, the theory, I know all of that stuff. But the technical aspect of filmmaking, I learned from film school, like cameras and more details in cameras. Because I learned some before, but in film school, I really, you know, like, you know, you have exams and stuff and all this stuff, so I learned my lighting. It's good for a director, you need to know all these things, because you can't be on set, you don't know lens or focal length or, or frames per second. If you don't know none of this stuff, you can't really bring across a vision. So I'm, I'm happy that I gained that. But the crazy part about it, because I did that KJ video before, 
like, and I never showed one of my fellow students. When they saw it somehow, they was like, Vado, why are you in film school, you know? Because we did this video that short on the red one, but I'm like, you know, explaining to them that I'm still learning, you know? Yeah, but that's the good thing. And I always encourage people, like, if you have any projects you want to do, try to get it done, you know? You know that for a lot. Just, you got to fund it yourself, get it done. Because the way you can prove to people that you could do this is by just doing it, you know what I mean? Yeah, because you got an idea, sit on it, find a way to do it. Don't ever say, okay, I don't want that. Not even ain't just film, that's in anything. If you have a business you want to start, just go out and do it, you know?